Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome back to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the R15, which is a device from a company called Rapid Oxygen that aims to give civilians the ability to provide oxygen to patients in the pre-hospital setting prior to EMS arrival. All right, before I can talk specifically about this device, we need to talk about oxygen very briefly. So obviously oxygen is essential to life, and in the air around us, we have about 21% oxygen. Usually that's completely adequate for what we need, but occasionally in certain cases, such as if somebody is having a hard time breathing, they have asthma, COPD, maybe they're having an allergic reaction or have another metabolic issue going on, they require some supplementary oxygen to be given to them. And that just helps their hemoglobin become more saturated and circulate a higher concentration of oxygen throughout the body, which will ultimately lead to better outcomes for them. Now, oxygen is also used in cardiac arrest. So oftentimes, if we're coding somebody, we will have them on oxygen through the bag valve mask. Um, and that's just ensuring because we do have such a low amount of blood being circulated throughout the body in CPR, that's ensuring that as much hemoglobin is saturated as we can, um, and that will help them in the long run. Now, I will say that oxygen shouldn't be used in every case. Uh, certain situations, such as in a heart attack or a stroke, oxygen's actually been shown to be harmful for them if they're not already hypoxic. And hypoxic means that they have low oxygen saturations. So if they aren't hypoxic, we shouldn't just be giving oxygen to these patients. Uh, because that will cause vasoconstriction and some other issues. But that's uh, neither here nor there. We're not going to get into that rabbit hole in this video. I might do a video in the future with that. Essentially, what this device is, is this is made by Rapid Oxygen, like I said before, and they're a company based out of Connecticut in the United States. And this is the R15. So the R15 is designed to allow civilians with no training to bring this out and pull one lever, which I'll show you guys in a second, and provide the patient with six liters per minute of oxygen for 15 minutes. If you don't know, oxygen is measured in liters per minute for its dosage. This is technically a medication, but because this is basically an automated system, this falls under the same laws that say an AED does, where if you were a civilian, you were using this in good faith for the patient, you'd still be covered by Good Samaritan laws in the United States at least and you really wouldn't be at a huge risk of lawsuit or anything like this. So like I said, this provides six liters per minute for 15 minutes, and the thought with that time frame is, is that the av average ambulance response time in the United States is about eight minutes. So this should give you enough oxygen for an ambulance to get here, and even after that 15 minutes passes, the uh, six liters per minute will decrease, but it will still continue to produce oxygen. So the way this works and what's kind of unique about this and why it's not just an oxygen cylinder um, is because this requires no special storage other than some temperature controls, which we'll talk about in a second. But essentially, this does not need to be checked regularly. Uh, it does not leak air and it works based on a chemical reaction. So I'm not a chemist, so I might get something here wrong, but my understanding is this has manganese, it has H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide essentially, and water on the inside. When you get there, you can peel this sticker off here, peel that off, and then you take this lever and you rotate it down. And that actually combines all those ingredients and it creates a chemical reaction within this box that produces the oxygen. So that's why it doesn't need to be checked for pressure or anything like that. Another bonus of this not being a pressurized tank or requiring batteries or anything like that is that you can store this anywhere. Uh, so there are a lot of OSHA requirements for where you can store pressurized cylinders. They can't be in large areas. And with this, you can mount this on the wall next to an AED in an office building, and it would be completely OSHA compliant and completely safe. Like I just said, this does not require any batteries or anything like that to go in here. So you don't have a risk of this not being charged when you go to use it or anything like that. Um, I will say it's one restriction is its temperature. So obviously I just said this has water in it. It cannot freeze. If you freeze this and you go to use it, it's not going to function. Now, if it freezes and you give it 24 hours to thaw, it will work just fine. So just because it freezes doesn't mean this is uh, completely inoperable. 
but it will not work in that time frame. And the colder it is, the less oxygen you're going to get out of here uh, in that time frame, it will still work. And the warmer, the more oxygen you're going to get out of it in that time frame, but it's actually going to shorten that time that you can deliver it. So they recommend its use being used between 68 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a pretty narrow window. However, that should fit um, probably 95% of the workplaces in the United States as far as like office buildings or gyms or anything like that. Altogether, this weighs about 16 pounds, which is relatively heavy, uh, although any adult should be able to carry this to a patient. One disadvantage also is that, um, you know, this shouldn't be your primary in cardiac arrest. You still should be going for that AED um, and calling for help before you're grabbing this. However, this would be a great thing for an ancillary person to get so you've started CPR, you've put on the AED, what have you, you've called 911, and then somebody else, if they're thinking of it, can grab this and you can apply supplementary oxygen to your patient. So I wanna talk briefly about the uses of this and where I see this being of benefit. And then I'll go through a quick demonstration on how this functions. They sent me a demo unit so I can actually use it without um, releasing the chemicals in this one. Uh, but I wanna talk about kind of how it's used and why I would use it in the pre-hospital setting and in situations where I wouldn't necessarily use it. So primarily, I see this being a benefit in cardiac arrest. You have somebody that goes down, you've got the AED on, they've started CPR just like we said, and you can take this and if you have a pocket mask and you're doing the 30 to two ratio for your compressions to breaths, then you can actually take the tubing in here and connect this directly to that pocket mask and you're gonna be providing them higher levels of oxygen than just what you're expiring. Uh, as you give them the mouth to mask respirations. The other thing you can do if you're doing hands only CPR is you can take this and you could potentially put an airway adjunct in like an OPA or an NPA, that's the nasal pharyngeal airway or the um, oral pharyngeal airway. And you can put the mask right on the patient there and just do compressions. And every time you release your compressions, they're gonna be getting a little bit of that oxygen into their lungs. Now, generally we'll do hands only with just the ambient air but like I said, that's only about 21% oxygen. So this will provide just a little bit more and that's going to help them um, all, the, all the much more. The other use for this, and I think probably the more controversial side of this would be using this for somebody that has difficulty breathing. Uh, you know, we're putting oxygen on a lot of people in the ambulance. It's not as used as it used to be uh, because they have found some negative effects in it in certain conditions like I talked about before. Um, but for somebody that's hypoxic, uh, somebody that, you know, any number of things, maybe it's a pulmonary embolism, maybe it's uh, allergic reaction or COPD asthma, and they need some more oxygen to kind of uh, supplement what they're able to bring in, then I think you could use this in the pre-hospital setting. Um, and, you know, generally you're not going to do any harm to those patients. Even somebody having severe cardiac chest pain or having a stroke is not going to be severely negative, uh, negatively affected by you know, six liters per minute of O2. So now I wanna show you guys a quick demonstration on how this works and kind of how simple it is and intuitive. It doesn't really require any training, like I said before, uh, but it is good to kind of have a familiarity with it. So very similar to an AED, on the front here you have instructions, one, two, and three. So you have to take this unit, you have to lay it flat, and you're gonna pull the tape uh, to open the mask compartment. And this tape is gonna free up this lever as well as open up the plastic compartment at the top. You're gonna take this lever and you're gonna flip it all the way down to the green line when it stops. The oxygen's gonna start flowing. You're gonna probably hear this operating. And then you can take the mask and you can go apply it to the patient. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be thinking, well, hey, you know, six liters per minute is not high flow O2. Generally, we're giving that through a nasal cannula, which is the two prongs in the nose. The mask has enough venting in it, and it's not a non rebreather mask, so that if they're breathing, uh, over-breathing the oxygen that's being supplied, they're still getting enough ambient air in, so it's not going to be rebreathing for them or doing any, any negative damage there. Now, a couple closing points I wanna make about oxygen. Um, oxygen is not going to fix your problem. You know, oxygen in an asthma attack or any of these situations with difficulty breathing is not going to actively fix what's causing them to be hypoxic. What it's going to do is it's going to maintain them for a time. So what this is meant to be, it's meant to be a stopgap between 
when you call 911 and what time an ambulance shows up that has more oxygen and is able to actually fix the underlying issue. You want an asthma attack, oxygen's fine, but you're gonna be wanting to get them their inhaler and some bronchodilators. You know, same with PE, they need that clot busted. Oxygen is just gonna maintain them for a little bit longer. And, and that would be the one warning I have for you. All in all, I think this is a really cool device. I'm very excited to see where they go with this. Right now, you can just buy this unit here. They're working on making a mounting cage for it, um, along with uh, some other storage options. Their thought right now is this could be kept at like a front desk or something like that, and then easily brought to whatever issue is happening in that building. You know, its negatives are going to be its storage options. I would really love to be able to take this in my car and keep it with me. However, because it has such a narrow range uh, between that 68 degrees and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep it there. So I think that would be a really cool improvement for them to do in the future. But right now, I think this is more a either at home or at office kind of device. Rapid Oxygen did give me a code to extend to you guys. I'll leave it in the description down below if you're looking at picking one of these up for yourself. Um, and it gives you a certain amount off. I can't even remember what that is off the top of my head. Um, but it's a really cool device. Uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of potential for this. And they're kind of the first that I know of that are branching out into the auction delivery and kind of going one step further with the civilian care. If you have any questions about anything I talked about today, please leave them in the comments down below. I always enjoy hearing from you guys. Be sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next week.